Hello and welcome to my brand new podcast. I'm Nikki Raby and I'm thrilled that you're joining us. I do lots of things. I'm an actor, coach, writer, speaker and a mum. And in my coaching work, I work with creatives, personal brands, freelancers and small businesses. In this podcast, I want to talk about success, but not in the traditional sense. I want to bring you conversations that discuss success, what it means, and how there are many different versions. We're going to be talking about business, branding, becoming visible, saying no, saying yes, and how you can create a thriving portfolio career doing more of what you love and less of what you don't. Sometimes there can be a certain mystery around the online world, so I'm going to be asking my guests how they started and grew, how they get paid, how they stand out, and how they create success on their terms. As always, please check the show notes for all things we mention and come and say hi over on social media at Nikki Raby or via my website, nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast. In today's episode, I'm talking to Dahlia, who is an entrepreneur. She comes from a background in marketing and has worked at companies such as Nestle and Nivea in her previous life, BC, before children. A year ago, she started a pop-up co-working space and a creche in a local church. And today, she's launching a nursery in a business club for women, Blooms London. She's passionate about connecting people and about enabling parents to get back into work guilt-free. She has monthly parent networking events and a free webinar, as well as showcases entrepreneurs' areas of expertise. I think you'll love this episode. Let's get into it. Hi, Dahlia. How are you? Hi, Nikki. How are you? Really well, thank you. Hey, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Um, If people don't know you, tell us more about who you are and what you do and what you've been creating. Yeah, so my name is Dahlia. Uh, I'm the founder of a little business called Entrepreneursery. Um, And it really stemmed from my personal need when I was freelancing and I had my youngest child who's now three, um, at home with me, um, and I had a nanny, but it just, the whole dynamic wasn't working, so I started looking around for a co-working space with a nursery or a crush, um, and I just, you know, I found one, it was really great, the third door was, but it was in Putney, and I just didn't feel like it would, you know, be realistic for me to, to, to take her there with me, so I decided to start a little one myself, so I started um, entrepreneursry as a pop up uh, this time last year, almost exactly on the 25th of January. I had my first pop up, and um, yeah, and I, I did that for about six months. And then I met Lou, who is the founder of Blooming Founders, uh, the Facebook group, and um, she was building uh, a, a business club for women um, in Old Street and she asked me if I'd like to run my a crush from her business club so I jumped at the opportunity and this is where I am right now I um, I'm in the process of launching my my nursery space here we're just waiting for Ofsted and meanwhile I do networking events for parents here um, I'm working on a few really cool collaborations, some, uh, also some holiday clubs also coming soon um, for the children over the holidays because we know how stressful it is uh, for parents, especially in the hol- school holidays. Um, and I have my online webinar. And this is my first podcast, so I'm really excited. Thank you for, for having me. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> Um, yeah. It really, when I was reading more about you and, and what you've been doing, that word guilt came up again of working without guilt. Um, yes. Talk to me a little bit about that and, and what kind of stories you you hear time and time again. Yeah, I mean, I guess once you have a baby that, or as soon as you see those lines on the stick, I think you, the word guilt just comes um, into your life 
and it rushes in like you've never felt it before. So uh, from the time I found out I was pregnant, you know, I was constantly worried. And, you know, I think it's a natural thing to just you just want everything to be OK. And then once the baby's out, you know, some women go through um, postpartum depression and, um, you know, it's this that could be a real struggle but from that I've seen so many businesses flourish because it just inspires moms a lot of moms to to start something to to you know it kicks them into gear and you know they realize that you know that their child is is the most important thing to them and they don't want to miss out on the milestones and they want to be there as much as possible so um you know leaving home and and, and going to work most of the time full time is is really hard i think that it's just such a sudden transition and it doesn't really happen gradually and it's really tough on both the child and and the mom as well i don't think it's just difficult on the child so um that's a lot of where the guilt comes from i think is that women need a more transient transition phase um that takes its time and doesn't happen suddenly uh and it's it's gentler so that that's really what i'm trying to offer is a place where you know if you if you're going back to work you can start here do it gently you can continue nursing the baby if you are or you can just pop your head around the door and and you know have a cuddle or give them lunch or you know maybe join in for a class during the week um it doesn't have to be you know you're going off to work and the child's going to nursery or staying home with with a nanny and and you're having you know so much time apart yeah. uh Especially so in yeah when it takes so long to get anywhere that exactly you, know, you could be potentially adding another hour hour 20 onto each end exactly. of your day and it can be really tricky can't it definitely so i think you know i i'd love to see either more entrepreneurs or more concepts like this popping around all over London because I think and all over the country and, and the world hopefully because I think you know it's really really needed and people are not accepting the status quo anymore and and you know it's it's difficult raising children and it does take a village and um and and we're here to help in that process so that's what I'm trying to do yeah. to help relieve the guilt <laughs> absolutely yeah I yeah just one step at a time it, it's exactly so true. and I, I love what you're doing because it allows people to have that blend of possibility so I think for a long time you mentioned the status quo of you know you either stayed at home with your child or you went back to work or you saw your child all the time or you just it was assumed that you wouldn't see them at all and I really yeah. think that we've we've come a long way that actually there needs to be a way that we can combine our work and our life and our parenting and our careers all a little bit better so we can have that blend so it, it's not extreme for everybody um yeah and so how did you get really clear on, on the idea how did you bring it to life what were the first steps that you took well there were lots of steps actually because originally my idea wasn't a co-working space to be honest it was to have a play cafe um and just to have uh, a section that was co-working um just just like a cafe with desks around and to have uh rooms where children could um could join in activities but i i always wanted it to be the central focus point would be the parents and the mums in specific because there's so much to do out there for the kids um but there's the the, the mums get forgotten so i really wanted to build a business concept around the mums and their needs so i started researching and interviewing potential clients and you know this kept coming up of, you know, a place to network and a place to meet other women. And it's very lonely being at home as a mom. And it's even the ones that are starting businesses felt it's lonely. And they felt like the imposter syndrome was really strong 
feeling like, am I a mom? Am I an entrepreneur or a freelancer? You know, which hat am I wearing? But if I am an entrepreneur, but I'm a mom and I'm in my PJs working, I don't really feel like I'm a professional. So, you know, this kept coming up. So that's when the idea of having a co-working space um, as a central concept and the nursery being um, like an adjacent business to it uh, came up more strongly and um, and the networking and the, the workshops also through my uh, my pop-up events uh, were very popular the, the people loved coming for the workshops um, and they liked the informal uh, nature of it mm-hmm. because you know the babies could come uh, and, and, and the moms were relaxed and you know it's amazing when you, you know, women who are mums are just so efficient, <laughs> you know, you know, they get so much done in the day and they can juggle a baby um, sleeping or nursing, nursing in their arms and taking notes and listening to a workshop. So, you know, the amazing things can happen. <laughs> so, yeah. I think yeah. you touched on that point of community and I feel like who you surround yourself um, with yeah. as a mum has never been more prevalent because as you mentioned sometimes it's hard enough trying to do all the things and they could be the basic things of you and your baby being fed and watered and dressed and actually leaving the house and then adding into the mix of starting a business and uh, promoting yourself and becoming visible again and um, just saying your like idea out loud it's really important who you surround yourself with because I think what you said is totally true of um, there is so much stuff for children and there are only so many times that you can sing the same nursery rhymes and if your child sleeps halfway through the thing you think well actually I could have seen yeah. a fiver in a different way and exactly something <laughs> nice or you know not that I'm begrudging my child by any means yeah. but um how what's your vision I guess going forward in terms of how beneficial do you feel like this community is going to be for people who are maybe on the outskirts just wanting to bring their idea to life I mean I have big plans for what I want to do um I I have people contacting me all over the country about you know they want to open um, a similar concept so uh, I don't know maybe some sort of consultancy uh, or something around that could happen um, also all about women empowerment um, trying to again promote my webinars and networking and workshops hopefully to empower women to see that you know they are more than um, more than they think they are you know we we, t- we tend to really underestimate our powers and underestimate what we can do um and just get together in a group of women who are working on their own businesses and you see amazing things i've seen so many amazing business ideas um come to life you know lots of trials and errors you learn from mistakes as well from your mistakes and from other mistakes um and yeah so lots of amazing people that i've met i'm sorry i forgot exactly my train of thought but <laughs> Welcome to my world. yes is what sleep they should do. yes exactly oh my goodness these kids who don't sleep um so um you've you've touched on this in terms of you've gone from your marketing background and you've yes. made this business really complement your lifestyle with your children yeah. how do you practically overcome any challenges I hate the concept of the juggle because sometimes it feels like I don't know the juggle just feels like such a big word that we're almost setting ourselves up for failure um but Mm -hmm. how do you when you have those tricky days or that day those days where you just feel like your your back's against the wall and you're trying to wear all the hats how do you practically get yourself out of that so I prioritize. So for me, the kids always come first. So 
if I have a sick child at home, that's, you know, a no brainer for me. If, um, you know, if something urgent has come up with the children, they always come first. So that's the number one thing. I, I have a, a lot of tools that help me. I, I like using Trello just to brain dump kind of and then I organize my thoughts on there I have also google sheets to help me you know to coordinate with other people that are working with me on collaborations or um, other stakeholders in my work so I work well like that Um, but it's all just about trying to simplify as much as possible for me Um, and I'm, I'm not the most organized person, but I'm trying to learn. Um, yeah, I'm it's trying. You can learn. I think sometimes we're, we're taught these things from childhood of like, oh, you're not creative or you're not organized yeah. or you're not whatever or confident, but actually we can all learn these things, you know, we're, yeah. we're doing yeah. great things. Why not? Yeah. So, I mean, I schedule everything in my phone calendar uh, with alarms, so I yeah, so I don't forget things. I have it pings me five minutes before every appointment, or if I have to get somewhere, I it pings me an hour before, so that way I don't miss anything. And um, yeah, it's just those little things that help me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if I if I lost my phone, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I'm in a hot sweat just thinking about it. It's um, I know. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. And yeah. when you made your move from working and being employed to being an entrepreneur, how have you made that switch for yourself? What is it a different mindset or is it something that you've um found your flow with very quickly? So My dad is an entrepreneur, and I think I always had it in the back of my head that I wanted to do something on my own. Mm. So back when I was 19, um, there was an empty shop on our high street, and I asked my dad if he would um, get it for me so that I could open a juice shop, Mm. and he laughed at me. (laughs) But now, you know, they're selling the juice everywhere, and there's all these other franchises. So I always had this idea in my head that I wanted to do something on my own Um, and I always dabbled in it Um, but kind of when I had my first child it was I I won't go into it here but it was a bit of a um, traumatic experience so I had to stop working Um, so it, it wasn't out of choice it was something that ha- that had to happen yes. so getting out of that that situation took um, a good two years and then when I started thinking about getting back into work I really struggled because there were just people would see a two-year gap on on my CV and just immediately not meet with me so uh, I decided to do my master's then um, and on the first week of my master's, I discovered I was pregnant again. Ah. <laughs> so I went to my um, to my supervisor and I said, okay, this is the situation. I know I have one month to decide if I want to continue. So, so what's your advice? And he said, well, you know, if you think you can do it, go for it. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. And I said, okay, but my one condition is I don't want anybody to know about my pregnancy. I want to be treated as an equal. I don't want to be molly coddled, you know. So, um, so I did. I did my masters. I had the baby, and ten days later, I did my exams. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's surprisingly easy. I I thought doing it with a newborn because the newborn phase, you know, they they eat, poop, and sleep. So whenever he was sleeping. I do my revision and then, you know, it wasn't so bad as, as bad as I, I thought it would be. I think if, when I started writing my dissertation, cause I took an extension for that, when that happened and he was um, turning into, you know, like the, the crawling phase and all of that, that was, that was a lot harder for me to just really carve out the time to focus on, on that make a really interesting point that actually in the newborn they don't do that much but for the mother 
in those early days. It's it's more the baby well, the baby cries of course and, and needs you all of the time is very demanding. But actually you're recovering as the mum <laughs> and yeah. you're you're dealing more with your own shock and readjustment rather than the actual baby of what they need because they just need you really. That's the sort of or, you know, that your partner, whatever. Um so yeah, it's it's really important. And I feel um I feel like there is always room for opportunity of reflection and reassessment after something significant has happened in our lives. And sometimes when you're in it at the time, you think, how is how am I ever going to get out of this? Or could this be a possibility? And when you come out the other side, ah, oh, it's such a good thing. Um, yeah. I also want to ask you about maybe any books that you've read that have really... Um, helped you make this transition or anything that has kept you inspired or motivated or really highlighted what your vision is so um for me i i'm not much of a reader of business books i have some that i refer to but i don't i've tried to but it it just didn't motivate me enough but what i found that really helped me is the networking so meeting other people going through the journey. And I did uh, a really interesting program with um, with a lady called Anne Nakune who runs uh, Bloomsbury Beginnings, who also runs a pop-up co-working space and crush in Bloomsbury. And she has a program called The Parent Cubator. Uh, so that was a six-week course uh and uh, yeah that was really great and I met some again really great people there and uh yeah so the, I, things like that really helped me and then through that I met someone else called Nicole Vilo who has um super startups and she took me through the lean canvas uh business model and um yeah just being able to put the business plan on on a one pager that's very flexible and it's not as overwhelming as thinking oh my god i have to write a, like a 50 page document <laughs> i have type to make of thing decisions for the rest of my life yes, exactly yeah All and those things really um actually put people off and i was talking in episode 1 to maxine from um digital bonbons and I think that sometimes we can have this impression of ourselves that oh, we're not the kind of person who would start a business or that's not for me or that's not my path. But actually, we're, we're all just figuring it out as we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so if you look back on your teenage self and what mm. you know now, what mm. would you say to her? What would I say to her? Oh, gosh. I think I would say um, go with your gut. And even if it's a struggle, most of the time you have it right. So just, you know, trust your instincts. Mm, so yeah. important. And you yeah. don't think that you have instinct necessarily when you're a teenager because you're so easily oh, led by yeah, because trends or what people are doing. It, Exactly, exactly. And um, I, I definitely would have given myself time to, to take a gap year as well, just to make sure I know exactly what I want to do. Even though I think at 18, 19, we don't really know what we're doing. Um, but I think it would have been good to take some time out and, and, and regroup before doing my university degree. And there's such pressure, isn't there, for, you know, by the time you're 18, you have to know all the steps. And um, I've, I've done some coaching over time with some students and they, they come in for a half an hour session when I've had my clinic and they kind of say, you know, I'll ask them what they want to get out of the session. And they'll say things like, I just need to feel like my life is sorted. And I think, well, we've only got half an hour, but I'll do my best. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. finally, where would you like to be in five years' time? 
Wow, in five years' time. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to have um, my own space, definitely. Um, my own entrepreneurship, that's a co-working space and crush. And I'd love to be having more popping around, um, whether they're my own or franchises. Um, I'm open to the idea um, because I've had so many people contacting me about it, but also having, and I hate that word balance, or I, like you were saying, the word juggle is just, I don't like the word balance, but just having some sort of, I guess, peace of mind mm. that I, you know, I don't want to have any regrets of not doing something that I hoped that I would do. So I hope that my children, who will be by that time 14 and 11 <laughs> and 8, I hope that by that time, you know, I won't be in the deep in the teenage years and struggling with all of that. I hope that, you know, they'll look at me and, and you know, take some inspiration from that away from, into their um, teenage years and hopefully adult life as well. So, so yeah, I hope I, I'm doing it. I'm doing all of this just so that my kids can be proud of me. That's the most important thing for me. And I hope, I hope that's where I where I am in, in five years' time. That's the underlying thing for me. Um, and finally, if people want to find out more about you and what you're up to, where shall they go? They should go to my website, which is entrepreneursfree.co.uk. Um, definitely my Instagram. Um, I post about my events and my webinars on there as well. Um, Twitter, I'm on Twitter as well, um, at Entrepreneur Hub. And my Facebook group, Facebook um, uh, slash Entrepreneur 3 as well. So, oh, But mainly through my website, they can reach me. All, all the links for my social media are, are on there. Fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much. I've loved chatting. And um, I think what you're doing and building is just wonderful and so needed. I can't believe yeah. somebody hasn't done it up until this point. I think it's going to be um, really key in the way that we move forward as parents um, in the working world. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for all your insight and your inspiration. Thank you. And um, I'm sure you'll be getting many, many inquiries. Yeah, that would be great. I'm always happy to chat with whoever has questions or inquiries, whether, you know, it's about opening an entrepreneurship that's local to them or I'm, I'm looking, you know, for a co-founder as well. So anybody who is interested in that, I'd, I'd love to speak with people. Wonderful. And maybe yeah. you can bring that juice business to life in the Yeah, end. maybe. The <laughs> part of entrepreneurship. <laughs> part of entrepreneurship to have a juice bar yeah why not yes all that yes. can stop my skin looking so dry and flaky and sleep deprived that would be <laughs> brilliant thank you yeah. so much i'll speak to you soon thank you nikki bye, bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, go to nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast and you'll find all of the show notes, including how you can get in touch with Dahlia and any upcoming events. I'm actually doing a webinar for her in a couple of weeks, so I'll link that information there as well. You can go to nikkiraby.com forward slash coaching to find out how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one, or perhaps come to one of my events or do an online course. And as always, we would love to hear your thoughts across social media. You can follow me or tag me at Nikki Raby. Thanks so much. I will see you very soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast. <laughs>